Hey everyone and welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. In this video we're going to continue our virtualization series and we are going to go over how to download, how to install, and how to configure VMware Workstation Player. And once we have that installation complete and we're happy with it, we are then going to go out and download, install, and configure Kali Linux as a guest machine running from within VMware Workstation Player. Okay, first things first, what you want to do, uh, open your web browser of choice, head on over to this URL, and depending on if you are on Windows or Linux, um, you're going to go ahead and download whatever platform your host is, meaning what you're using to install a workstation player on top of. I'm on Windows here, so I'm going to download it for Windows. If you're on Linux, you would go there. Those of you on a Mac, there is a product called VMware Fusion Player. Uh, the only thing is it is not free to use. They'll give you a free 30-day trial, and then they charge you, I think, for the low low tier, it's, and I could be wrong, I think it's about $80, middle tier, $150, and top tier, about $225. Uh, and they just give you different um, things you can do with it, like how many virtual machines you can run at the same time and things like that. So, But for the Windows, it is totally free for us to use this on Windows and Linux. Uh, the only caveat is you can only run one virtual machine at a time again. So. Let's wait this for this download and we'll continue. And it looks like it's about to finish here. So we'll now go ahead and I'm gonna show it in folder just so I can make sure I right click on it now. We're gonna go ahead and begin the installation. We're gonna right click on it and do run as admin. And this is a little more um, cumbersome of an installation than uh, VirtualBox. So it will take us a little bit longer, but not much. You're talking an extra minute maybe. And I do have a video of how to install VirtualBox and uh, Kali within it um, that I'll, I'll actually post up top here. So what we're going to do here at the first window, we're going to go ahead and hit Next. And you're going to thoroughly read this entire agreement here and then hit Next. And here I just leave the default. I'm not exactly sure what the enhanced keyboard driver is. I've never needed it. Um, I, I suppose if you're, you end up having keyboard trouble, you could go through and get it. Uh, I usually just install VMware Tools that um, has a keyboard driver built into it, which I'd recommend if you're going to use VMware um, that you do install VMware Tools. It's a separate application that actually runs on the PC that's not tied to um, VMware Workstation Player. Um, it, it actually is the same tool you use to manage uh, ESXi servers. So I'm going to hit Next here. Here I'm going to uncheck the Join the Customer Experience Improvement Program. You're more than welcome to if you want to, um, but I'm not. I'm going to leave the updates here just because I like to keep my software up to date in case any um, new vulnerabilities come out. Uh, I think it's just a good idea. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it create both shortcut icons and hit Next and then Install. And just an FYI, during the um, virtual network drivers installation, you may lose network, connect ugh, network connectivity for a few seconds. Very similar to what happens with VirtualBox, just an FYI. And there you have it. We are actually done now with the installation for VMware Workstation Player. Uh, and one quick note, they actually do have a VMware Workstation um, Pro. And what that allows you to do is have unlimited um, virtual machines that you can run. And, and of course, there's some more features to it. Um, but that's, that's the biggest up, um, change for the price. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a virtual machine to run inside our new um, workstation player. And to do that, we're going to go out here on your web browser and go to Kali.org. I will add Kali.org as a uh, reminder in the description, so you don't need to worry about writing that down. You're going to go to download. And a lot of stuff here, but we're going to focus in on these two. Specifically, we're going to focus in on this one. But briefly, to give you uh, what the difference is here, this is an installer image. This is like an ISO actual installation CD, if you will. But it's not really a CD, but it's, it's the equivalent of it. It's going to take you through the whole entire process of installing Kali Linux from picking your keyboard layout, your language, your time zone, your partitions, uh, everything. It's going to ask you to do that. It gives you direct access to the hardware, so it's actually supposed to run more efficiently. 
Uh, I haven't noticed much of a difference, but that's what they claim. Uh, where then you go over here, and this is a pre-built image, meaning they went through the whole install process. They set the partition tables, which means you're going to get a pre-built hard drive of whatever they allocated. You can't reduce that. Uh, they're going to tell you how many CPUs you need, how many um, gigs of RAM you need, and those two you can go back in and modify. Um, you can and you can modify modify most of the hardware specs, but you can't. Um, modify the hard drive size and there's a few other settings you can't and if you were to go in there and start you know modifying them or deleting some of the virtual hardware you may corrupt the virtual image and it might not boot at all so we're going to go with this and i've actually already downloaded this because it's uh, three gigs but just to show you you'd want to pick 64-bit and you'd want to hit right here and it'll go and download Oop. i'm going to go ahead and make sure i do have the other one in there before i cancel i do so i'm going to cancel this download and then we're done with that and we're done with that so now we can open up our vmware workstation player so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new virtual machine just quickly this is where you would actually go to um, open up the pre-built you'd click open and then you would browse to wherever you downloaded the um, pre-built machine we're not going to do that we're going to create our own from scratch we're going to do that we're going to click iso image then you browse to wherever you downloaded it Mine was in the download, so I'm going to do that. Hit next. We're going to leave this here on Linux. That's fine. I believe technically it's on 5 something, but that's kind of 5x. It should, should cover us. And I think for the most part, this is just a, um, a templated, like based on, oh, Linux is going to need this many um, CPU cores. It's going to need this much memory and this much hard drive. We're going to end up changing that anyway. Um, but you'd, I would just pick Linux and then whatever's closest to your kernel or your um, Linux distribution. We're on Kali Linux. So here you could move if you wanted to move where they were located. Let's say you wanted to put it on a different uh, hard drive or um, partition. Whatever you wanted to do, you could do that here. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Actually, here. I'm going to put this under because I accidentally erased it. Kali Linux. And here you're going to want to change this to 25 gigs for Kali Linux uh, because 8 is too small and it will crash on the install. And go ahead and leave this on split virtual disk into multiple files. This means you're not going to have to allocate that total 25 gigs at once. It's just going to allocate what's needed and it will expand as needed. Uh, that way um, you're not just sitting around with wasted space. And if this looks good, which it does... Uh, you go ahead and hit finish, but real quick, if you did want to go in there, you could go in and change if you wanted to add in more processor cores or memory. I think we're going to be okay with what we have here. Um, you know what? Just to be safe, I'm going to bump this up to a gig. Just to be safe. Because uh, I have seen it with 512 where it throws up an error and says low memory install. And I'm not exactly sure where their threshold kicks in, but I know it won't kick in at a gig, so we'll just leave that there. Otherwise, just keep the um, hardware the same, at least for the in initial install. You can always go back in. That's the cool thing about virtualization. Once it's built, you can go in and add CPUs. We can expand hard drives. We can add second hard drives. We can add DVD players. We can add um, memory. We can add whatever we need. So we're going to go ahead and hit finish here. And here's our Kali Linux. And we're going to go ahead and hit play, which is the equivalent of starting it. You can also just double click on it or hit the play here. We're going to get the VMware screen and then we should get the Kali Linux installation screen. And here you go. You're going to get a graphical install. It takes a second to boot up. Just as a, a note, you can see how you can't really get out of it too easily. If you hit control whenever you're in a VM window like this, it will release the mouse for you. So we're going to go ahead here and let it do its thing. Those are simple. You're going to always get those mount errors right there. It's trying to find multiple mount points that we, we know we're not using. Um, so here we go. The first part you're going to get, again, we're going to pick our English. If we're English or if any other language, if you're a different, speak a different language, um, you can go back and change this later. And then it's going to ask what country we're in. I'm in the United States, so I'll go with that. I speak American English. I'll go with that. You would obviously pick what you needed. It's going to detect the hardware here. This takes a couple seconds, so I'll go ahead and pause. All right, we're about to the point where it should ask us for a host name and a domain, which I don't have, but I do have a host name. We'll just go ahead and make that Kali Linux. Again, I don't have a host name if you did. I mean, not a host name, a domain. If you did, you'd enter it here. I'm not going to do that. Now it's going to ask me for a user. Oops. 
Uh, let's do NN Cali user. Sounds good to me. NN Cali user. Password. Password again. Hit continue. Now you're going to pick a time zone. Again, before it just kind of picked your area and then it wants to zoom in a little closer. So I'm going to do Eastern. It's going to make us partition some disks here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the guided. You could go manual if you wanted, um, but the guided does just as good of a job. Uh, I'm not going to do any of the encryption. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's do this disk. This is the only disk we set up. And here, um, this is kind of personal preference. I do like to go with a, harm part or a home partition. That I, That's just kind of my old school mentality. But for this install, we'll go ahead and go with all in one partition. The only reason to go with the extra home is it just kind of like divides your um, hard drive. It kind of gives you like a second hard drive in Linux, if you will. But for most people, I guess you're not going to need that. So let's just go ahead with this. And here it's going to tell you it's going to have the EXT here. Um, that's going to be your primary or your primary partition. This is going to be your swap partition, which think of it as a um, in Windows, it's the equivalent of that page file. It's virtual memory. So the reason it's showing a gig is because that's how much memory we allocated to it. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Actually, we're going to hit finish partitioning and write to disk continue. And here it's going to tell us that um, we're going to write this to disk, meaning if you had anything on this CD, or not the CD, on this hard drive, it's going to wipe it, which we don't. We just created this, so we're good. We're going to hit yes. It's going to partition it. And then it's going to do what's called install the base system. And at that point, it's going to ask us about our desktop preferences. So I'll come back when we get to that prompt. And here we are. We are at the... Um, the desktop experience if you're used to Windows Server. Um, I'm going to leave this the default and it, it also allows you to pick the tools that comes with Kali Linux. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but Kali Linux is a very um, security minded uh, release of Linux. It comes with a lot of um, vulnerability testing, uh, penetration testing, reverse engineering, uh, a lot of tools that can be used in a lab to uh, um, test a lot of different things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it all, but if you wanted to install GNOME or KDE, you could. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue, and it's going to start the long process of retrieving these files and installing them. This will take about 10 minutes probably, so I will come back to you then. Okay, so we are now at the part where it's going to ask us if we want to install the um, Grub Bootloader. Uh, what that means is it's it's warning us that if we had multiple operating systems on this hard drive, which we don't, that by installing this Grub bootloader, we're only going to get into Kali Linux. It's going to overwrite the uh, bootloader for whatever other operating system was on there before. So if you wanted to like dual boot, you wanted a Windows and a Linux on the same machine, um, obviously you should be doing what you're doing now and just putting it on the same machine using virtual virtualization. But uh, if you are, if you're old school and you want to do it that way, you'd want to hit no here and go and manually add both the operating systems. But we don't have the problem, so we're going to hit continue. And we're going to want to put it right here on our own. That's, this is our main hard drive, our only hard drive. Go ahead and let it finish. And here we are. The installation's done. We're going to go ahead and hit continue to reboot and boot into our um, new Kali Linux installation. Okay. So far, so good. There's the bootloader. Here's Kali Linux. It's going to time out after five seconds, or you can just hit enter. Now it's going to go ahead and load the new OS. And here we go. You hit escape here and you can actually see it loading. Uh, if you get anything that says failed, it will be red. And that kind of gives you a heads up like, hey, uh, this driver didn't load or that didn't load. So, okay, here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and log in. And we're going to log in with our... And our password. And we're looking good okay so now that we're in here 
Let's go ahead and make sure we have network connectivity. So let's ping out to our friends at Google. Looking good there. Um, here's our partition tables. Here's how much hard drive space it took up to uh, actually go ahead and um, install that. So we're using about 12 gigs. So see, if we would have left it with eight, it would have ran out of space. Um, well, these are all the mount points. So we're looking good there. Um, I guess we can go ahead and make sure we can get on with like a few websites. But you get the point. Um, let's go to tesla.com. Why not? See what's going on over there. All right, and that's loading fine. Let's check out Ford.com. All right, so you can see the internet's working fine. You can go ahead and minimize here. Now I'm back on my other desktop. If I really wanted to get crazy, I could open up my virtual box now. And, you know, I have that going at the same time. So, as you can see, you can do multiple things, and you could even be surfing the web. That's what's kind of neat about it. You're doing whatever you want on your Windows machine, and then you pop over here to your Kali Linux if you wanted to get something done there. Um, so... We'll go ahead and finish this up, just give you a, a quick overview of what Kali Linux is known for. It's known for its um, cybersecurity tools. So, you know, there's a lot of different tools like password attacks, um, like brute force, John the Ripper, um, wireless attacks, um, just a lot of different things. Um, use these in a lab and use them um, in a legal way. <laughs> Nothing nefarious, obviously. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of cool stuff out there. If you if you enjoy um, Linux, this is a fun OS to work on. Um, if you're interested in cybersecurity, it's a really fun operating system to work on. Uh, what you could do is spin up a secondary uh, Linux box. You could maybe a Red Hat one or a SUSE or um, Ubuntu or a Windows box. And then you could have your little lab, a virtual lab here, all within um, your virtualization session. Obviously, the limitation being with um, Workstation Player, you would um, be limited to one at a time, but you could, you know, just pay the, I think it's $49 to get the full version of Workstation Pro, and then you could have as many as you wanted. So just some food for thought. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I would love you to smash that like button. If you want some more um, content, um, subscribe, ring the bell. We plan to put out a lot. This is just some series. We're starting on virtualization because I have a passion for it. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment. Otherwise, you have a great day.